सो गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन लेट्स स्टार्ट द अंडरस्टैंडिंग शेप्स चैप्टर सम पार्ट ऑफ थ्योरी ऑलरेडी यू हैव डन आल्सो इन दिस चैप्टर नाउ वील प्रोसीड फर्दर विद द थिंग्स इन दिस चैप्टर सम क्वेश्चंस यू हैव डन आल्सो इन दिस एक्सरसाइज ओके सो लेट अस मूव ऑन फर्दर विद द एक्सरसाइज फर्स्ट सम थ्योरी पोर्शन अ काइंड ऑफ रिविजन ओनली ऑफ दैट यू हैव ऑलरेडी डन आल्सो ओके सो so that the video becomes remains complete or it becomes complete for so many of you okay now see here i am first discussing this uh, angle sum property that you already are knowing now what is angle sum property of polygons now see all the polygons are there you know polygon is a closed figure and you can have uh, minimum number of sides to make a closed figure is 3 only so minimum is triangle only triangle also polygon of three sides four is if four sides are there it's called as quadrilateral so there are so many sides in this now what so first under this heading we'll see some general properties that you are knowing like for triangle If I talk about triangle as a polygon, we know the sum of the angles of a triangle is how much? It is hundred and eighty degrees. Then second thing is what? The sum of angles for a quadrilateral four sides. Polygon has four sides, and it is how much? Three sixty degree. Now with this, we can generalize the formula and find the sum of all the interior angles for any triangle for any polygon. And what will be that formula? This we have done also. It will be that's what it is. The general formula is two n minus four right angles. I have been writing this formula. It is not wrong also. Right angles are ninety degree. And I can also write it as what n minus two into. Hundred and eighty degrees. That is also correct. Okay. Now, what next? N is what number of sides? Number of sides of the polygon. And so this general formula is for the interior angles only. so i in the upcoming articles i will be telling you for the exterior angle also so n is what number of sides of the polygon clear next sum of exterior angles of a convex polygon sum of exterior angles of a convex polygon how much it is it is 360 degrees it is 360 degrees so this is the general for all the convex polygons we can see now convex polygon concave polygon simple curve all these things you have done also if you are there in the class you have discussed also all these things now what sum of exterior angles sum of exterior angles of a convex polygon is equal to 360 degrees okay now clear to all this thing what is 360 degrees so it remains the same as it is Whatever type of polygon is there, its sum of exterior angles will be always three hundred and sixty degrees. So that from this formula only something some general uh, sub formulas can be derived. Like each interior angle, sorry, each exterior angle of a <coughs> sorry, each exterior angle of a, a regular polygon. 
of insights insights will be equal to what 360 degree by n so n is the number of sides here then what next next is each interior angle now these formulas we have done in each interior angle of a polygon is equal to what now you see the sum of angles you are knowing that is what polygon of n sides n is the number of sides here is equal to what n minus 2 into 180 degree. This is the total sum of angles divided by n. That itself is the formula for each interior angle of a polygon of n sides. Clear to all now? Fine. Then what? Next formula. Again, I have been telling this is all the revision only because already we have done in the class also these things. Next formula is. If each exterior angle, so if you are knowing the value of each exterior angle of a, if each exterior angle of a regular polygon, if each exterior angle of a regular polygon is x degree, is x degree. I made a mistake. Let me clear this. Polygon a regular polygon is x degree. Then how to find out the number of sides in that? So for finding the number of sides, we will divide what? The total sum of the angles upon the value of each angle and it will not be degree here i wrote by mistake here degree will not be there 360 upon x because it will be a number only now it will be 360 upon x yes so this is what the number of sides of the regular polygon so this part is okay this is the end of the theory for the first exercise And one more note they are given for finding the number of diagonals. But this note is valid or the formula is valid only if the number of sides in that polygon is more than 3. That means if a polygon has more than 3 sides then the number of diagonals will be number of diagonals will be There is a number of diagonals of the polygon equal to what? n into n minus 3 by 2. But this formula cannot be used generally, like generalized formula, this is not there that number of sides has to always be more than 3. You put the number of sides, but it has to be always more than 3. And which why we do use the formula for finding the number of diagonals. This completes the theory for this particular exercise. Okay. Okay. And uh, some more questions I'll be sending you through the PDF also. Exercise 13.1. One. I remember some questions also we have done also. Now I'm taking up some more theory of the chapter regarding the quadrilateral part. 
and again these all things are again not view for you coordinators you have done already only and uh, you are knowing the types of quadrilaterals and in this same lecture only i told you also that quadrilateral is what a polygon having four sides so for quadrilaterals that will make the spelling better even should look proper now quadrilaterals t e r a now general thing you are already knowing that what is a quadrilateral first it is version of polygon of four sides so in a polygon if there side number of sides is 4 it is called as a quadrilateral that itself is the definition and again i these things are good or uh, helpful for mcq type questions like fill the blanks true false means objective questions these will be helpful for you four sides are there it is a polygon now kinds of quadrilaterals again till the properties are very important here if at all you are thorough with the properties then only you can use them and accordingly solve the questions because uh, the upcoming exercises 13.1 is very simple but 13.2 onwards we have questions good questions you are having okay, kinds of quadrilaterals so the first quadrilateral we are discussing is parallelogram parallelogram and see understanding parallelogram is very important because we will do in the same article some more things like special types of parallelogram so i am drawing a parallelogram a b c and d and see these two at sides are par this sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel means ab and cd are parallel ad and bc are parallel and they are also equal also single dash means ab and dc are equal ab and cd are equal and double dash means ad and bc are equal so ab equal to cd and ad equal to bc opposite sides are equal and they are also parallel this property you are already knowing for the parallelogram and when we learn about rectangles and squares and rhombuses we will see that extension of these properties only what more see i am drawing the diagonals now i am connecting the non adjacent sides the diagonals intersected o so some more properties see here what the properties are diagonals diagonals bisect each other that means ao equal to co and bo equal to do for a parallelogram what more adjacent angles are supplementary now you are already knowing that the property of uh, parallel lines the co interior angles are supplementary so adjacent angles will be what also supplementary adjacent angles are supplementary in nature clear to all that means sum is 180 degrees and uh, one property i have missed out opposite angles are also equal okay in the parallelogram now second thing is what second thing is not basically i would say but say it is an extension of the parallelogram properties only for some special types of parallelograms some special types of parallelograms first one is rectangle now how you can define about rectangle is 
Let me draw a rectangle first. It is A, B, C, and D. In a rectangle, again, opposite sides are equal. Then this angle are 90 degree. You are already known that each interior angle is 90 degree also. Opposite sides are parallel also. Now see, since you have said it is a special type of parallelogram, how you can define it? You can say that, that what? A parallelogram, if one angle of a parallelogram is 90 degree, or it is a right angle, if one interior angle of a parallelogram is 90 degree, parallelogram is 90 degree then it is called as a what rectangle because a rectangle has all the properties of parallelogram only in the parallelogram if one interior angle becomes 90 degree then it is called as a rectangle so parallelogram is basically a sorry so rectangle is basically a special type of parallelogram only and some more properties are there see diagonals bisected each other in case of parallelogram Diagonals will be of equal length. Diagonals are equal in length. That means AC equal to BD. And you have seen also already that each interior angle is 90 degree. Opposite sides are equal and parallel. Third is rhombus. Rhombus is also a special type of parallelogram only. How? Let me draw it first. A, B, C, D. And see, one dash means all the sides are equal. I am drawing the diagonals now. A, C and B, D. And see, these diagonals are at right angles to each other is diagonals intersect at 90 degree now see how you can modify a parallelogram to find a rhombus i'm writing the definition it is like that what if two adjacent sides if two adjacent sides of a parallelogram are equal if two adjacent sides of a parallelogram are equal then it is called as a rhombus. So in a parallelogram, we are doing some modification, it then becomes a rhombus. So the diagram also speaks so many properties. Scrolling it further, then what? Some more properties are there. All the sides are equal. Diagonals intersect at 90 degree. Diagonals are not equal here. And also, one property you'll remember that the diagonals bisect the angle through which they pass. So all sides are equal. This is property is common to square and rhombus both. All the sides are equal. All the sides are equal. Diagonals intersect at 90 degree. Then what? Diagonals intersect 90 degree. And diagonals bisect each other. This thing also true. So see, so many properties of parallelogram are there in this. But extra properties is what? The diagonals intersect at 90 degree. And all the sides are equal. And also diagonals bisect the don't, diagonals not, don't bisect each other. Diagonals bisect the angles of rhombus. The properties of parallelogram are already there. The next fourth one is square. What about a square? Let me draw a square first. A, B, C, D. Again, each triangle is 90 degree. I have shown this. Then I am drawing diagonals A, C and B, D. The intersection point of diagonals is O. Now, again, square is also a special type of parallelogram. What it is mentioned? If two adjacent sides 
if two adjacent sides but here we are modification over a rectangle if two adjacent sides i will take just if the here but it should be if two adjacent sides of a rectangle are equal if two adjacent sides of a rectangle are equal then it is called as a square if two adjacent sides of a rectangle are equal then it is called as a called a square so in the rectangle some modification you are doing it becomes a square now some more properties of square are there each interior angle is equal to what 90 degree what next next property is all sides are equal this is a general property you are knowing and whenever we ask same property this one property you are telling next property is what the diagonals are equal in length obviously like a rectangle so only rectangle and square have this property the diagonals are equal in length then what diagonals diagonals intersect at 90 degree this is true for rhombus also and square also then what next diagonals bisect the diagonals bisect the angles of a square okay i hope it is clear these properties already you have learned also you have done on so many times also some more property okay next next is i'm going to take fifth one is a trapezium trapezium could be new for you but let us learn it like this only i'm drawing a trapezium a b c d see these are the parallel sides so only one pair of sides are parallel Okay. A quadrilateral in which one pair of one pair of sides are parallel is called a trapezium so quadrilateral is a type of quadrilateral trapezium is a type of quadrilateral in which one pair of opposite sides are parallel okay so ab is parallel to cd and see obviously if the lines are parallel we can also say that the co interior angles will be supplementary so angle a plus angle d will be what 180 angle b plus angle c will be what 180 degree this also property we can say for this trapezium angle a plus d so these are co interior angles only it will be 180 degree also angle b plus angle c will be 180 degree and the simple reason is what that they are co interior angles because ab and cd are parallel to each other 
This is the property of trapezium. Clear to all? Then, a subclassification of trapezium is isosceles trapezium or isosceles trapezium. Now see, in isosceles trapezium, what is there? If the non-parallel sides are equal, it is called as isosceles trapezium. Let me draw it first. It's a trapezium only. A, B, C and D. And if the non-parallel sides are equals what I mentioned if non-parallel sides if non-parallel sides if non-parallel sides of a trapezium are equal then it is called is called isosceles trapezium so see of clearly a b and c d are parallel what are the non parallel sides a d and b c so if a d and b c also are equal it will be called as a isosceles trapezium so it already has a properties of trapezium but if the non parallel sides are equal you will call it as isosceles trapezium okay See, some more properties are there. Base angles are equal. What are the base angles here? Angle A and B are base angles. Base angles or angles on same base are equal. Both the things are correct. On the same base. So, same base means if DC is the base, the two angles are D and C. So, angle D equal to angle C and angle A equal to angle B. Clear to all? And see these properties will be used when you are solving questions. Angle A equal to B and angle C equal to angle D. These are the base angles children. Okay. So if the base angles are equal, this is true for a isosceles trapezium. Diagonals I am drawing. What about diagonals you can say? Diagonals are equal in length. That means diagonals this is true for isosceles trapezium. Diagonals are equal in length. That means AC equal to BD. Diagonals are equal in length. I had told also for square, for a tangle and now isosceles trapezium also. So it's good that you correlate the properties which we have learnt where. Last is kite. The shape you remember, these days you might be flying also using a kite, so much time is there. Kite is also a type of quadrilateral only, A, B, C, D. This AC is one diagonal, BD is one diagonal. What, what how to say a kite? A quadrilateral. Uh, quadrilateral a quadrilateral in which two pairs of a quadrilateral in which two pairs of adjacent sides are equal two pair of adjacent sides are equal is called a kite is called a kite okay <clears throat> sorry is called a kite
then what we can say more properties are there first property is diagonals of a kite intersect at right angles first thing is ab equal to bc obviously right thing all you have said adjacent sides are equal so ab equal to bc and ad equal to cd this is one property as adjacent sides are equal next property is see i've drawn the 90 degree diagonals intersect at 90 degree it is right angles this was true for square and rhombus and also kite also so diagonals intersect at 90 degree later on you see always you can use pythagoras theorem whenever you find 90 degree the next is angle a equal to angle c that means these angles are equal the diagonals are intersecting at o what more thing oa equal to oc what more property diagonals or diagonal bd diagonal bd bisects angle b as well as angle d so both the angles b and d are bisected by which diagonal bd then what one more property diagonal bd diagonal bd bisects the or you can say divides in a proper way divides the kite divides the kite into two congruent triangles into two congruent triangles this thing is true for parallelogram also one diagonal of a parallelogram divides into two congruent triangles okay so these properties are very important children and you will be using them or utilizing them so we can say triangle abd is congruent to triangle cbd so this is done by diagonal bd only which is bisecting the angles b and angle d also and also making the triangles congruent 